so where oh there you are there you are so curve and uh Talishar, right uh morning morning good morning morning hey Talishar. how come there's no destiny here there just isn't we don't need desks for our work anyway and this bench is awesome. Look, it has comfy, comfy cushions. Sit down, quick. Come try the delicious breakfast I made for you. Whoa. Thanks, Salishar. But what is this? It smells a little odd. That's my special poisson champ, poisson champ pie. It's even tastier than the usual recipe. It does smell odd, but that's why it's special. You've piqued Paimon's interests. What about you, Lemo? Jerf, what do you think? Uh, analysis of the composition indicates eating this could be a difficult trial. Well, awesome. We're real tough cookies. And let's dig in. You and Paimon wolf down a half portion of the odd smelling pie. Half an hour later, you both came back come back from outside, clutching your bellies. Just where did you disappear to? If you're still hungry, there's more. I made lots. Uh th thanks, Talishar. No need though. Paimon just went for a quick rest. <laughs> and there's still some pie left. Why don't we box it up for later? Mm. Your expressions. Wasn't it tasty? I thought I did a good job. Perhaps you're tough enough. Paimon knows why they call it poisson champagne now. The poisson are in Paimon's guts <laughs> chanting, We want to swim back out. Huh? Oh, uh, that sounds absolutely awful. I'm so sorry. Oh, don't worry about it. Paimon's better already. Anyway, the problem is Paimon's preferences, not your cooking. <clears throat> Back to business. Did you get any info about the knife? Oh, right. Paimon's forgot we're supposed to be working now. Yeah, Paimon. At least I'm here to tell you that we are still on the job. Okay, so about that. We did find something that might be useful. This is a knife from the Origin Tableware Conferry. People who said Rocher owes them money? Yeah, they masquerade as a legitimate business, claiming their tableware is favored by Fontaine's upper classes and can be sold for hefty sums. People like Roche often fall for it. They pay a fee to join and date a pile, a pile of loosey table, lousy tableware in return. They, then they try to sell it for enough to make back the initial investment and then some. The tableware itself is unsellable junk, so the victims have no choice but to find other fools to pass the bat into. I hear they call it expanding their downline network. Hmm, sounds pretty familiar. See? Humans are creatures full of lies. It seems like Rocher didn't span his downline network. In terms of ethical human relations, Mr. Rocher's morals exceed the level of the average per person. Yeah, he didn't continue to bring in more victims. Oh, so maybe his wife isn't the worst judge of character. But his financial acumen is way, way below the average. In the end, his poor wife had to deal with the fallout and took the losses. Ah, that's true. But weren't they exposed by the paper? Weren't they exposed by the paper? Can two guys... Um... Can two guys, uh track down the money and help them recover the losses? Our colleagues got involved some time ago and made multiple arrests 
but the ring leader is a crafty one, and immediately claimed that the perpetrators of the scam were, were temporary employees. Most importantly, he kept all their accounts completely separate. As a result, recovering the losses has proven extremely difficult. Is there nothing you can do about it? <laughs> we can push things forward today. I got the location of their possible... Of their possible... I'm sorry guys, this mosquito is absolutely aggravating for me. But yeah, I got the location of their possible hideout and I'll be investigating it later. Whoa, did you find their lair? The Marichal C. Fenton is more capable than you think. Considering the, the facts of this case, I now have reasons to believe that Sir Arthur was stolen by the elegant tableware confrere. Although it does sound very likely, it's best if you don't act so certain of it. Hm. We'll know once we get there. Let's go! Okay, ma'am. Uh, leftover poisson champagne. Right. Uh, what a stained dinner knife. Based on Agent Talashar's analysis, this item belongs to the Allergen's tableware conference. Wherever in this world I roam, association I that was once exposed home. by the Steambird this blade, as a gang of swindlers. It is the last link I have to the land of my birth. Right. Uh, is that a, is that a quest item? The poisson champagne leftovers. It seems like it. Leftover poisson champagne. It looks cute, but might cause stomach problems later. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we're below sea surface and we have to go to over that way all right nothing just going to get my health back so where is it sadly it's over here Huh, so their base is underwater? Yeah, it seems we just must go down. How troublesome. Your interest condition will be best if we didn't get wet, but it seems we have no choice. You said it's the last time too. How's Curve? Uh, he's always he's already first he score another drop and all starting to get old. So he's got to maintain 30 30 30s? He's still trying to yawn though. Ah, first he's. Very yes it is. I'm twenty I'm twenty-eight, so that what what makes that with me? <clears throat> is it is it just like um, Virgil and Sony and Lucas? Because it seems like it. <clears throat> We're here. Let's see. Sure, a lot of them there. What should we do? Charge in, beat them up, and make them confess? Don't be so violent, Paimon. They're already frightened and on edge. They might destroy the evidence if we give them another scare. Hmm, that's true. And let's sneak in, find the evidence, and then beat them up. <clears throat> Do we have to beat them up? Well, it's such a small place, so a fight is inevitably in inevitable anyway. Fine, then it is possible to distract them. There must be something here that we can use. Curve, hide and wait here for us. You're too big not to get spotted. Just come over once we're done. As you wish. And let's hurry up and figure out how to lure them away. So 
Or do we have to fight them? Covertly find a way to distract the crowd. Covertly, you said. Anyway, okay. Covertly find a way to distract the crowd. Hmm, this chest. What if Paimon hides inside and makes some noise? Then you guys can go look, can go look for clues while they come over to investigate. Think that will work? Uh... Huh. Doesn't sound like it will work. Let's come up with a plan B. About this. This explosive barrel could make use of it by blowing it up from a safe distance. Uh, sure. But, uh. A safe distance, you said. Um, well, I know what to do. If I do this, will that work? Speed of light. Warning, explosive trap. Uh oh, there was a trap. So that was a trap. Okay, well, maybe Paimon's idea was the best one then. Sure, give it a try. Time is Christian in, and once the rest of you are well hidden, starts. she starts shaking the chest. Someone's over there, by that chest, and true alert. This plan's way too dumb. So what's the plan then? this way. Hey! Oh. Get out. What? Um. Spot has chicken lights in it. Is someone cooking? How about adding, adding in some seasoning to put them to sleep after their meal? Or we can do something else to drive them away. Nice idea. Check your bag for any useful seasoning and all. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I didn't know what it was going to be used for, but now that you um, show it in front of me, it does make sense. <clears throat> Whoa, Paimon has a feeling it will be super effective. Hey, how could you put that in there? It's an insult to my culinary talents. Don't be mad, Talashar. Your cooking might end up making a very significant contribution here. Paimon certainly won't be able to overcome the trial of toughness it poses. Really? And fine, let's hide and watch what happens. Once shout time is shouted, the entire living table where Conferi starts gulping down the food with the extra seasoning. It doesn't take long before one by one subtle changes begin to appear on their faces, and then they start running toward the exit with their hands clutching their stomachs. See, Kalashar, 
they are experiencing the power of Poisson Champai. Just like I said. <laughs> I'm incredible. I don't get curved. Now we can search for evidence to our heart's content. Yeah, it seems like it. But before we do then that, I'm going to uh, check everywhere for hey. specific ingredients that might be useful. This way, this way. Oop. Let's just leave it here. I cannot see anything. I see everything. This as well. Now that we're on it. Old clockwork locket. And a trage and a try an archage. An archage. An archage clockwork locket. It looks quite old. What's this? Looks like it then opens. There's a photo in there. Who is she? Yellow portrait of a girl. I don't know. Should I? Should I know who that girl is? <clears throat> Database responding. Database responding. Database responding. Failed to retrieve information. Retrieval failed? Sure, your database wouldn't respond without having relevant information, right? Water jet inside you? Hmm, let's put this away for now. I'll let your teacher to look later. So that's an evidence. Old clockwork locket. Not a clockwork locket, it looks quite old. Alright, so this has been added. Uh, so now, what else? Diary of a Valiant Struggle. Uh, wait. After getting the boot from the Order of the Fruit, after getting the boot from the Order of the Fruit, I was really down the dumps. Luckily, I joined a new group, so I feel a something a little better. This new, this new group's or operations are a little different than the last ones. Anyway. Let's go, Intrepid Valberry. So that's the guy. Uh, Crafty Bullfruit, my brother. You're always in my thoughts. I can't believe the higher-ups sent Cal Lily to hunt you down just for the formula to that stupid potion. I guess you're plumb out of luck now, huh? But don't worry, I made a big ruckus in the Order of the Fruit in your defense. They may have kicked me out of it, but I've got no regrets. I only hope your soul can rest in peace. No one else knows this, but I've also put lots of bullfruits in my new home to remember you by. Looks like only four of the five great operators of the Order of the Fruit now remain. The Order of the Fruit. So, Valberry, Bullfruit, uh, Chow Lily, apparently. Uh, what's there? I don't know. I finally received my first mission to get money off some guy named Roche. But old dogs got no shame, which is in to repay his debts like that. I went out there and socked him twice before he coughed up a pile of junk. The only thing I in there that looked like it could be worth anything was this logic. It looked like a woman's. Surely not his wife's, right? Unbelievable. Who in their right mind would marry a guy like that? Wait. So, this one. Okay. Uh, it seems like something happened today. Directors 2 through 41 were all taken away. Supposedly, the Steambird blew the lead off our business and got the Mara Chelsea Phantom involved. Luckily, I'm new, so I'm safe for now. But I don't get it. Aren't we just in the regular old churchlery business? Whatever, it doesn't matter. To repay this boss's kindness, my first order of business is to pay that paper a little visit. I'd originally planned to tear them a new one. 
but the vault says that we should keep a low profile for now. I guess I'll start with that dumb bird at the door then. A knife through that bird's head should send a message loud and clear, right? As the other directors were taken away, I'll go to the boss after the job's done to tell him what I've done. He'll be so happy. Might even give me a promotion. Let's go. Intrepid Valberry, away. Okay. <clears throat> a diary of a valiant struggle. A record of the life experiences of a strider. Knife those stupid birds straight through. This should be a good enough warning for them, right? So, uh, from what I, well, saw in what was written in this diary, seems like um, they are quite in quite involved with uh, uh, Sir Arthur. Don't mind if I take all these bull fruits. Well, let's take this fell, I suppose, but... Yeah, okay. Um, so this cranberry here. There's a tea set as well. So let's... Uh, wait. Let's sit here. And read this dining table with tableware. Uh, dining table with tableware. An overwhelming amount of tableware is scattered all over the table. <clears throat> Sorry. An overwhelming amount of tableware is scattered all over the table in a messy yet charming pile that's ripe for the taking. Yeah. A table knife. A table knife just like the one left outside the steam bird. Must be them. Confront the members. Okay. Who could this guy? Yeah. <laughs> Who cooked today? Chill. Find him and chill him. Boss. Boss. Uh, boss, I'll immediately. Where? I'll go find the cook. Hm. This agent right here is today's chef. Chef? Chef. So who's going to kill me? Marishal Sifantum. Agents, how did... Uh, how did you get in here? I don't think you've got time to worry about that right now. I'll obtain evidence of your crimes. Evidence? But officer... All of them were temporary workers, and then you arrest them already? We're working on another case right now. All of you are suspects in the plot to get revenge against Steambird by stealing Sir Arthur. The paper? Uh, impossible. I've never held any grudges toward them. In fact, I even want to thank them for pointing out the flaws in our business model. You're good with words, but what will you do once we show you this? Those are irrelevant, irrelevant seeing them. Alright. Once we show you this. Uh, maybe this, baby? Oh, dang it, that's not it. one? See? Director 42 admitted it in their diary. Busted. You fool. Didn't I tell you to keep a low profile for now? Intrepid Valberry. But, boss, are we supposed to just lie down and take them take it when they're bullying us like this? The, the Marshal's Phantom? Officer, with all due respect, 
this fool is just a temporary employee. He hasn't even passed his probation period. Since he's suspected of breaking the law and committing a crime, I have no choice but to fire him in the spirit of justice. Hey, how much longer are you planning on using the same old trick? F fire me? Why? Boss, d didn't you just say earlier that I'm the only one here who has always been loyal to you? Who are you? What are you talking about? You're fired. We have nothing to do with each other from now on. Teach him away, honored agents. He's all yours. Boss, you you betrayed me. Ah, you dirty double timing dodge. I'll teach you down with me. Uh calm them down. Alright. Suffocate. Suffocate. Incoming. Ah, I have to chop them down, it seems so. The wrong test subject. Yeah. Ouch! You blithering idiot! How do you go against me? You filthy, filthy traitorous mutt! You can't stop me! Alright, alright, that's enough. Just play nicely now, would you? Hey, redhead! Hurry up and fess up. Where's Sir Arthur? Hey, try it out, shorty. Not on your side either. Unless you're willing to do me a favor. Help me convict this traitorous backs backstabbing thief of a felony and make the rest of his life a living hell. Then I'll try my best to cooperate with you. Hm. The Marshal Sea Phantom never negotiates with criminals. But with the evidence we already have, the quality of the rest of his life won't be too different from what you are hoping for. Huh? Don't do that. So, are you going to come clean now? Alright, fine. I'll tell you everything. I didn't actually take Sir Arthur. I know it's strange, but something got to it for me. So I just stuck the knife there as a warning. Huh? It wasn't there? You're lying, right? Hurry, you got this, Curve. It's your time to shine. No, no anomalies detected in Mr. Intrepid Valbury's data. What? It truly really wasn't his hair red head? I... So, did you see anything at the scene? I saw a really smelly drunk lying on the ground just like Debra Roche. All I wanted was to stay well away from him. And it's Roche, right? Is there no one else? Even if there's nobody, you're gonna have to give us someone. You tried to show the trail we were following. And you're going to have to take responsibility for him. Now you're just making things difficult for me. You can't do it, Mr. Entropy Valbury. You even fought back against your own boss. Yeah, that's true. Fine, you're right. Let me think shit's over for a moment. Uh, some insignificant lackey. Um, Director 42? Can I say something? What? Do you have any leads? No, I don't. Then just wait a minute. Don't you see that I'm wrecking my brains right now? Ah, I've got it. I just remembered something. I went to the Fleur Saint in search of a locksmith, because I needed their help to break into the paper's office at night in Red Cabbage. Wouldn't you know, I ran into someone there who was also trying to find a way to sneak into the paper. Who was it? What was their name? I don't know, but he was dressed like a member of the Fatui. The Fatui? Them again? Justice may be absent, but the Fatui never are. And what did he do after that? How would I know? I'm not some sewer stalker. This time it's certain he's the one who stole Sir Arthur. Oh, but every certainty of yours has been around so far. It's certainly different this time. Don't you remember? There were four pairs of footprints at the scene, so there were four suspects at most. The Fatus is the fourth suspect. But what if it isn't him? Hey, don't look down on me. I'll bet my uniform on it, alright? If I'm wrong again, I'll quit and stay home. 
Calm down, alright? Let's not be too hasty. Hey, Redhead, can you find that guy? Why don't you just try your luck in the first song? I've seen him there on more than one occasion. Someone dressed as Fatus in the first song? If he really is there, he would, won't be difficult to spot. Alright, let's do that. We'll take these criminals back first and then head over to the first song. Don't forget your promise. You better convict that two timing traitor. Pin him to the wall. Don't worry. Neither of you is going anywhere. Huh? Wait, where is he? Where did the boss go? He was just here a moment ago. Hmm. Um, well, he snuck off in that direction while you were distracted. What? Why didn't you say something sooner? Well, I wanted to. But you tried to stop me, didn't you? That snitchy conniving. Darn it! He knew his life would be a living hell, so he fled. Hey, how about you let me do a denim for you? Let you go? What do you think, Curve? Based on my analysis of Mr. Valbury's data, he's telling the truth. And get going, Redhead. Don't disappoint us. <laughs> Don't worry. I give you my word as a man. Well, really? Are we really just gonna let him go? Just like that? What's wrong with that? If someone deceives another, shouldn't we support the victim in getting their revenge? I know what it's like to feel angry after being tricked. Old Turf, you should be taking note on this. As you wish. I recorded the behavioral and physiological data of everyone involved in my lie learning module. Now let's stop wasting time here. Our primary objective is to take the others back to the Marshall Sefenton and then get to the first song. You escort the criminals back to the Marshall Safe Hampton, and without a moment's rest, you immediately rush to the first song, the haunting rounds of the other suspect. <laughs> Alright, first song it is. Also, guys, a quick note. If you watched a uh, video on YouTube uh, to that point here in time. Um, uh, please, um, uh, fascinating. Let's go. Please, um, uh, consider uh, leaving a like and a follow, um, so that you may not miss another stream on twitch.tv forward slash forever acid when it comes out or another video on YouTube. So I'll leave that to you guys. But let's move on. <laughs> well, we are the flip song now. Now, where to begin our search? Let's go to a spot with large crowds. One for two uniform might not be undetected. Look, isn't that the guy? Oh, yes, it seems like it. You're here. Huh? So, did you bring the goods? What are you talking about? Huh? That's not the code. Who are you? Shoot! Gotta get out of here. Huh? Were we exchanging passphrases, passphrases just now? Forget that. Don't let him get away. Oh, trust me, he won't get away from me. Finally on the right path. Speed of light. What do you think? I'm faster than you. But I finally taught you, but why run like that? That was exhausting. You didn't... Uh, I'm on. Okay, stop. Stop chasing me. I haven't done anything wrong. Why run if you're innocent? Th that won't hold up in court. Why don't you tell me what crimes I've committed, huh? You stole Sir Arthur. 
hey, hey, I didn't steal that. Quite certain someone stole it now, aren't we? Don't even think about trying to weasel your way out of this. We even know you've been looking for a way to sneak into the paper's office. Take a look at my uniform, and take a look at your own. Are you trying to cause an international crisis? Do you want to say bye-bye to your life? No, it's that serious. No. After I complete this mission, I'll be able to retire early. Don't be like this. And why don't you try making this a bit easier for me, hmm? If you make things difficult for me, it's only fair that I do the same. So picture your retired life for a moment, and sit down to eat. You look across and see me. Every day you go on, I'll be your chaperone. And for every travel photo you take, I'll be there too, smiling. <laughs> wow, Talishar. This is definitely creepy. Uh, I uh, guess um, that's what uh, she's referring to when she says, uh, I'll make your life difficult. No, stop. That's enough. Don't terrify me like that. I'll come, I'll come clean, alright? It's not like it's a secret anyway. I am Bolar, a peripheral, a peripheral intelligence officer. What peripheral means is that I'm not very important. I was tasked with locating a research base belonging to a scientist known. I was tasked with locating a research base belonging to a scientist known as Moso Lobroso. Isn't that one of the lead researcher in the Fontaine Research Institute? I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that uh, Moso, the name Moso, I've heard of before. I don't know where. When uh, it seems that I knew it, so something that I've read about, or someone told us about, Moso Broso. Isn't that Doctor Moso? See, that's what I said. You've heard of him too. He passed away some thirty years ago. And a research base is said to contain valuable information, but no one knows its location. What does that have to do with the Steambird? Which was Dr. Moso's death is linked to the Steambird. I'm sure the paper knows something. It's linked to the paper? Correct. That's why I contacted one of their editors, Church, hoping to get the inside scoop. Isn't that the editor who was arguing with Talishar? But I revealed the papers inside info. I sent him a small gift. Do you, do you recall that the paper recently exposed the urgent tableware company scammers? I provided the details of their crimes. Whoa, so you did that? You're really amazing, huh? Thank you. Though I may only be peripheral personnel, but I'm one of the better ones. Anyway, the exclusive. A report gave Chet's reputation quite a boost. But when I contacted him again, he said he had nothing to repay me with. Utterly despicable. And why? That's when you decided to sneak in. Indeed. But I noticed something odd when I got there that night. The signature timber at the door was gone. That is before you arrived? Ah, uh, not again. That's right. And there was an envelope on its pedestal. Acting on my instincts as an intelligence officer, I opened the envelope. To my surprise, it was full of threats. What? The envelope at the scene? I could just need a peach at someone else's letter. Let us look too. <clears throat> Naturally, I have kept it with me. Please help yourselves. Mysterious threat letter. Alright, let's just have a look here. Moso's death 30 years ago is still in my mind. 
Whenever I think of your paper's rhetoric, which intentionally passes off falsehoods as truths, I simply do not suppress my indignation. As such, I have taken Sir Arthur captive. I eagerly await your paper's sincere repentance. Issue a public apology and surrender Moses' legacy. Should you continue to spin a web of lies that obfuscates the truth, I will be left with no choice but to slay that steambird. Crow or blackbird? Crow or blackbird? Interesting. So, are you done? The one who signed it, Crow or blackbird, is the criminal you're looking for. But is this for real? Is the paper really linked to Dr. Moso's death? There's no mistake. The inheritance mentioned here is probably Dr. Moso's research base. The paper definitely knows something. Later on, I put out some feelers, feelers in my circles, hoping this crow or blackbird uh, would be willing to meet with me. If she's in the same line of work, that is. She? But best case scenario, we can work together, and even if that fails, I didn't want her to raise any alarms, as it would only disturb my work. But as it turns out, we're the only ones who showed up. Taloshar, it seems you made a mistake today, huh? Taloshar, what's wrong? Church, tell me now. Tell me if this guy's lying. Biological indicator is detected to be normal. Mr. Bolar is telling the truth. Darn it! You... you peripheral! Why aren't you the culprit? You've lost me my uniform! Calm down, Talashar. We weren't serious. Don't pay it no, any mind. But I mind! I was serious. I care about whether I'm useful. I said I would figure it out from among the four suspects. Yet none of them was the culprit. I guess I'm just completely useless. Editor in chief, Euphrasy was right to ask for your help. I should just take out this uniform and leave. Relevant information detected. Relevant information detected. Agent Talashar, you should be useful. Can write for the Steambird's fantasy fantasy column. Which <clears throat> can write for the Steambird's fantasy column, just like Editor Jem suggested. That's not confronting, confronting in the least. Mm, wouldn't it be better to just name uh, Mr. Bullard the criminal? At least that might make Talashaw feel better. <clears throat> Miss Feynman, are you suggesting that I lie? Lies be a source of comfort? That doesn't count as a lie. Paimon means that when you're transporting someone, sincerity is what counts. True. That's true. For example, when Paimon is worried about getting weight from eating too many slimes, I'm not even going to begin to fathom how this is wrong, but Sure, Paimon, you do you. Then all might say that Paimon would still be cute even if she gets fat, or something like that. Let me see the options here. Yes, I would sincerely turn for Paimon. No, I would feel sorry for the slimes. Well, no, I would just call out Paimon for being a glutton. Well, I, she is, but... Uh... I just say that... Uh, Yes, I would sincerely comfort Paimon. And sometimes, sometimes, now that I think about it, the truth must some sometimes be harsh in order for the person that uh, you're talking to to realize that what she's doing or he's doing is wrong. No, I would feel sorry for the slimes. What? Are you really that concerned about slimes? That's enough. Curve can 
only analyze biological data. We can't understand all of their projects. Gender Bollard. She's so much. Huh? Tell Shark, you. Paimon, Nemo. I know you two are both amazing and tenacious. I'm just a stupid piece of dead wood that is always rolling downhill and finding new worlds. I rage at the slightest touch. I'm sorry, but from here on out, I'll just leave everything up to you. I'd like to buy both of you dinner one last time tonight. We'll go to a nice fancy place like the Hotel de Boer, so you won't have to eat the trash I make. But my mom hates farewell dinners. Drift thought some sense into her. Agent Talshar, I suggest you would consider writing for the Steam Retreats call. Alright, that's enough. I really need to think things through. Anyway, I see all of, I'll see all of you at the Hotel de Bull tonight. Don't forget to come. I'm on no style shot as a straightforward person, I still feel so sudden. Was today really that bad? Well, probably wasn't just about today. It's the... Well, it's just the, the series of events that escalated and, and didn't bore any fruit. Yeah, well, probably wasn't just about today. Amon hopes she gets better by tonight. Let's get some rest too. Amon's quite tired of so much investigating. Confirmed footprints. The footprints of Rocher, Chivin, Interpret Valberry, and Bolar. Based on Agent Talashard's analysis, they are the same as the footprints that appear near the newspaper. Bolar's testimony? In adventuring, as in business, According you always to have to seize the Bolar, while it's there. he had been to the scene of the crime before, but when he arrived, Sir Arthur was already missing. At the time, he noticed a letter at the scene. His intelligence operator's instincts chipped in, leaving him to open the letter, read it, and take it with him. Threatening letter. The letter signed Crow or Blackbird used to threaten a steamer. However, due to the efforts of Bolar, an unrelated person who came out of nowhere, this threat proved unsuccessful. Wait till until night. So I had to go near the hotel of the war. Good shame. Thank you. Go to hotel the war at night. So maybe. Talashar will have uh, interesting developments regarding her thoughts. Just hope that they are not too <clears throat> depressing, let's say. Hi, Mon. Nemo, good evening. Talashar? Y you're close. You haven't resigned already, have you? Not just yet. I just took off my uniform because it makes me feel much lighter. So, do I look good in these? Not bad at all. You look much better. Then your voice sounds gentler. This must be the right life for me. Since I can't do anything well, it's best not to do anything at all. Stop thinking like that. It just so happened to be a really true chase. It isn't just this chase. Have you heard have you heard of Fontaine's Aquabus? Yes. And that's how it got to Fontaine, right? And you must have taken the Clementine line, right? Evil is the Avil is the tour guide there, and Elfan is in charge of the Navi line. <clears throat> Actually, I used to be a tour guide too. I was the guide on the third line, the Callus line. It used to travel to the Fontaine Research Institute. 
that service was suspended due to the incident. Wow, you used to be a tour guide? That's awesome. It's not awesome at all. Tour guides aren't exactly the, the elite. Being assigned as a tour guide is what happens when you're bad at being an agent. Oh, so you returned to the Marisolsi Phantom because the line stopped operating, right? Not quite. I was laid off due to complaints from the tourists. Some praised me in person, but wrote complaints as soon as I got home. They said my voice grates like a fro. I should not accept it. Oh, I don't mean the complaints. I should not accept that they told me I was doing well to my face when they clearly had a problem with me. I'll let you in on a secret. Editor Jenk was the first to complain that I sounded like a crow. She's such a hypocrite. No wonder you were arguing with him back there. Paimon so gets it now. Let's not dwell on anything stuff, on annoying stuff like that. Now's the time to focus on enjoying some delicious food. Hotel de Boer was recommended by the official tourist guide. I may not like it, but I think you might. Thanks, Dalashar. But shouldn't we wait for Curve? He's not here yet. It's fine. He doesn't eat this kind of thing anyway. He just wants to record Hotel de Boer's data into his live learning module. His live learning module? Curve is really special. Yes, I'm very, I'm very happy to have met him. However, his core is aging rapidly, so it will go into hibernation mode soon. His body parts can be replaced, but not his core. Hi hibernate? Are you trying to say he will stop moving forever? I'm really just completely useless, aren't I? I can't solve my cases as an agent. I didn't I did complain since the tour died, and let's not even talk about my attempts at making breakfast. Now I can't even manage evidence properly. Did you sneak out to try and get curve repaired? No one but Dr. Mosu can repair curve. I just wanted him to see more about how humans lie and help him overcome the Mosu protocols. Overcome the muscle protocols? Why? That would be amazing. Trev could even become a genuine human. Feel like Paimon just heard something incredible. Dr. Mosso's true goal was to create a machine that would gradually become human by understanding lies and humanity. That's Trev's ultimate form. Legends say that the Fontanian scientist called Alain Diota. I think I've heard of that guy before. I shouldn't say that the Frontinian scientist called Alan Diotan created an amazing thinking machine hundreds of years ago, and Dr. Mosso seemed to want to surpass that. A thinking machine made by Alan Diotan? Could that be some more? Can understanding lies make someone human? Dr. Mosso believed that humans have various reasons for lying, various feelings underlined those reasons. It is those emotions that made them human. So he created a no-lying protocol, if Curve learns to lie like humans one day. It means that he's no longer bound by his machine programming and has acquired human emotions. We are out here investigating cases because I want him to see how humans lie. I want him to learn. Then you definitely can't give up. Shouldn't we fight harder to give Curve more time? But how? Dr. Maso is gone now. But his research base is still out there. Right, there must be a maintenance manual or something. <clears throat> I went through everything already and didn't find anything about the base. How about the newspaper? Do they have any leads? Didn't the Fatu say something like that too? And I was an amateur. If the Marishosi Phantom doesn't know, then the newspaper certainly won't. Just looking for its excuses, Dalashar. 
naturally just afraid of failure, aren't you? I... No one fails forever. If you've hit rock bottom, your only way is up. I've hit rock bottom? Yeah. You even took off your uniform. So I won't fail anymore? That's right. You absolutely will not fail again. In my humble analysis, Mrs. Paimon is lying. In my humble analysis, Mrs. Paimon is lying. Hey, wait a sec, Curve. Couldn't you have just shown up a little bit earlier? But such lies have a chance to mold reality. <clears throat> what are you talking about, Curve? Lies molding reality? Thirty years ago, Dr. Musso and I performed our first public tests in the Hotel de Boer. At that time, there were only four tables, eight chairs, and a waiter, who was also the owner. He said to me, Restaurant de Boer will certainly become a renowned luxury hotel. It was just like Mrs. Pyman's statement, a lie based on, on sincerity. But today, as you can all see, the Boer has its exquisite carpeting, uh, expensive decorations, two dining areas, and an endless string of guests. I think that if the lie about the Boer became true, and the statement that each and Talashaw will not fail again has the positivity or the possibility of becoming true. <laughs> Shutting down the lie learning module. Platforms together so that uh, transitions would be uh, smoothless. I mean, smooth and seamless, rather. <laughs> Yeah. Shutting down the live learning module. Mm, was Curve being a little odd just now? What was he talking about? It's the live learning module. It resides on Curve's, in Curve's core, and once it's enabled, it makes Curve's pure bunch of logical nonsense. Nope. Seems like. Uh, I think uh, Curve has a point. Oh, I'm starting to doubt Curve's reliability. No, no, I think Curve has a point. Well, Paimon thinks that some humans say things that don't make sense. Does that mean Curve is improving? It does. Talashar, are you gonna give up, give up just when Curve is showing signs of improvement? Mm, well, can you please say that thing again? Say what? You absolutely will not fail again. Oh, that's right, which is uh, you've already hit rock bottom. I get it, and I'll try again, one more time, if Curve is still learning, and I have to help him. Whoa, Talashao really is like a child sometimes. She gets in movies so quickly, but also perks up just as quickly. Yeah, sounds like you, Paimon. Is, is Paimon not mature enough? Relax, Paimon, you're pretty mature. Oh, just stop the chit chat. We should take action at once. Since the newspaper might know something, let's keep our eyes on the prize and keep investigating the theft. Since there are four of us, why don't we each roleplay as a suspect and recreate the crime scene? We might even find a breakthrough. Um, whoa, Palshad's brain is working fast. I'm on light side idea. Let's go to the steam burn now. Right. Uh, Talashar. Uh, right. You're the smallest here, Paimon, so you be Kevin. I'll be Dirty Roche. Mr. Bolar is here for Dr. Mosso, so let Curve be him. And all that's left is the redhead. Leave it to me. Alright, 
Everyone's got their roles, so let's reenact the night of Sir Arthur's disappearance. What did all these guys do? The first thing to reenact is the order of their arrival. The order of their arrival. Order of their arrival. Of the full suspects, which arrived at the scene first? Uh, is it this one? According to Bilal, he had been to the scene of the crime before, but when he arrived, Sir Arthur was already missing. At the time he noticed the letter of the scene, he said told his operatives instant kicked in, leaving him to open the letter, read it, and take it with him. Alright. According to Tripit Badbury, he had been to the scene of the crime before, but when he arrived, Sir Arthur was already missing. As an act of retaliation, he took out the dinner knife and stuck it there to say, Now this is a warning for them. In addition, he saw a smell of drink. As well as Roche. What about this guy? According to Kevin, he had been to the scene of the crime before, but when he arrived, Sir Arthur was already missing. All he saw at the scene was an old drunkard and a knife. The fan himself from the drunkard, he grabbed the knife and fled. So that would be first up. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. This. Then uh, this, then this, and it would be this. No, uh, Full suspects which arrived at the scene at the last. Uh... Okay. Um I didn't have a clue regarding that, so... <clears throat> Incredible. Moore is absolutely correct, wasn't me. I'm the first... I am the first to arrive. I'm Roshi, a middle-aged man who was kicked out by his wife. I've been loitering around here because I'm trying to get a job at the paper. On the night of the incident, I drank a little, and I remember Sir Arthur sitting on its precious pedestal before I got completely drunk. Later on, I feel asleep. I feel I feel asleep. <laughs> Later on, I fell asleep by the road, and then I am Bolar, the second suspect to arrive at the scene. I immediately noticed that Sir Arthur wasn't where it should be. So the real thief stole uh wait, wait. so the real thief stole sir arthur between the time of my arrival and mr roche falling asleep and that criminal left a letter full of threats for the paper mm -hmm. acting on my intelligence officer's instincts i read the letter left by the thief and took it with me from the scene after that i'm up next
<laughs> look, look at Ace's face right now. <laughs> well, he's playing the role. I'm up next. I'm Intrepid Valberry, Director 42 of Eternal Gang. Uh, all right, all right. I'll I'll see I'll see it after the stream. Sure. Criminal gang. Mm -mm. I wanted revenge on the paper, so I plan to run the office straight through. Sir Arthur was gone when I got there. I was furious, but there was nothing I could do. I just stabbed a knife into the pedestal to scare them and left. It's finally Pam's turn. What's going on here? Uh, it's finally Pam's turn. I'm Chippen. A problem, child. I'm here to get Sir Arthur to spread the word that my dad's a big fat weasel. But Sir Arthur's gone. There was a knife in its favorite pedestal. I tried to look for it, but I found a smelly old man. I somehow woke him, and that terrified me. I took the knife to defend myself, and ran as fast as I could. I didn't even notice what the button got torn off my clothes. Indeed, I am that smelly old man. The commotion Chevin made woke me up, and I vaguely caught sight of him running off with something. After that, I looked toward the paper's office and saw that Sir Arthur was missing. I was afraid of becoming a suspect, so I hurried back to my usual haunt at docks. Is this everything that happened? Palm and Vince are reenacting them perfectly, but did we miss something? Or anything? A threatening letter. That's right! Real bad letter since the fifth Marty is tied to the incident from 30 years ago. Uh, 30 years ago, the paper should have some idea about the piece identity, right? Yeah, but the paper is still in the dark and all in all this. We should deliver this letter to them immediately. How could we have about something so crucial? Because all of you were too busy trying to console me. I'm so sorry for being a burden. You shouldn't thank my dad, Telashar. Haven't you read through Dr. Mosso's case files? Those should be really exclusive, exclusive information. Now, now, ah, now to mention those, I forgot to tell you about the contents. Mm. Let's go over there to discuss it. Dr. Moso's death is closely linked to the paper, so it feels weird to talk about it right outside the front door. This part is perfect. You wanted to know why Dr. Nosso was tried, alright? It actually stemmed from public opinion. Public opinion? Well, not long after the existence of Dr. Nosso's lie detector was made public, the Steam Bird published several articles on it and quickly drew the public's attention. Relevant information retrieved. Nosso exclusive behind the lies. Mosso protocols, protocols to watch. Lie detector, a game of authority. The paper used special features like these to incite widespread fear and worry among the general public. Soon, public opinion began to turn against Dr. Mosso. What were they worried about? Oh, what were they worried about? For example, how to guarantee that the lie detector's output is incredible. No, it's credible. What would happen if a suspect is a, in a trial isn't lying? The curve says he is. But most trials in his justice result. But if curve's reliability can be guaranteed, and those concerns would evaporate, all the information retrieved. Content from a lie detector, a game of authority. 
When using protocols to restrict authority, the central question is not the lie detector's reliability, but its ability to remain independent from outside authorities. As the article points out, Curve is just a machine. So what would happen if the people put their trust in Curve, yet someone could control Curve and use it to falsify the truth? Most of the trolls are there to prevent that, right? We live in information retreat. Content from most of the trolls will call to watch. It must be noted that as the most of the trolls are man-made, there is a possibility of them being modified. This may prove to be a well-concealed trap. Whoa! Are they accusing Dr. Mosso of secretly tempering or leaving back doors? This is just the beginning. All kinds of other characters piled on after the Stimbird triggered the first outpouring of public opposition. Over the information retreat, fish can't live in clear water. Project the Goldfish Bowl World. Published by the Seven Nations Gazette. Shocking Misjudgment of the Lie Detector. Published by Short Anthologies. Shocking Misjudgments of the Judgment of the lie detector? Trev made a mistake? <coughs> that was just a lie, of course. Trev was never involved in any case, much less in misjudging one. That's how public opinion works, and so it was all downhill from there from for Dr. Moso. In the end, some even came forward and made accusations against the doctor. They called the lie detector a double scam, and all the results were completely manufactured. They believed the doctor was deceiving the public in an attempt to gain the power to pass judgment over, over, over others. And so they demanded the doctor be severely punished and the lie detector be destroyed. Aren't those accusations a little too serious? Would anyone even believe stuff like that? Many did. They were all just ordinary people. So how could they differentiate the truth from lies when we don't have access to sufficient information or believe what others want us to believe? I mean, it just so happened that at such a critical juncture, the Steambird did something huge. They provided its evidence that exposed Dr. Moso as having falsified results. Their evidence was key to Dr. Moso's conviction. Evidence? Did Dr. Moso really deceive, deceive everyone? Doctor refused to admit it, of course, and so he died defending himself in a duel. Only when did things start to calm down. The paper's reputation started, and a useless speech like Kurt was soon forgotten. I was just left with the marsh's phantom as evidence. So, is Kurt the real deal or not? Well, I think Kurt is the real deal, and Dr. Moser was wrongly accused. Then was the evidence presented by the paper falsified? Or did they make a mistake? The person who wrote the threatening letter seems to think that the paper deliberately fabricated those lies in search of in search of fame, profit, or something else. Oh, and could she be someone very close to Dr. Moso? Back for revenge? I'm would definitely avenge the mole if the mole was wrong like that. <sighs> I can't bear to think about it. Look at the usual says. Don't jinx me, Paimon. But Dr. Moso passed away 30 years ago. So someone very close to him? I wonder if Euphrasia knows anything. Should we go see her there? Don't worry. She wasn't in charge of the paper at the time. And I don't think Euphrasia is a bad person. I hope so. Fine. Looks like we'll have to ask her Ask her about it tomorrow. There was total information overload. Someone's head needs some time to recover. Alright, then let's head home. Alright, then let's head home. Get some rest and meet outside the paper tomorrow morning.
This girl. This girl. Interesting. Did she go there or 